Hi, my name is Casey Hines, and I'm from Northland Preparatory Academy in Flagstaff, Arizona, and this is NASA Now. Hi, I'm Rick, and this is NASA Now. NASA has taken an extraordinary journey over the past 54 years. So what does the future hold for space travel? Who better to ask than one of NASA's own astronauts? That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Turning trash into gas. That's what scientists are working on at NASA. In an effort to support future long-distance space missions, NASA researchers built a prototype reactor designed to convert trash into gas. The device incinerates the trash that astronauts accumulate in space and creates methane, oxygen, and water. These elements can then be used for rocket fuel or even life support. The reactor could fly for demonstration on the International Space Station as soon as 2018. This research also has potential applications right here on Earth. By converting trash into power, these generators could be used to generate electricity in remote areas. Did you know that NASA technology from the 1970s could be used to develop future tires for commercial and passenger vehicles? The same type of tire that was used on the lunar rover during the Apollo moon missions could be incorporated into future tires manufactured by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. NASA and Goodyear have recently completed a jointly funded project to improve on the wire mesh moon tire technology. The new tires would save energy, be more resistant to punctures, and could also be used on more massive lunar exploration vehicles. Now you know. In a previous program, we talked with retired Air Force Colonel and astronaut Greg Johnson about his path to becoming an astronaut. Today we're going to continue that conversation and see what Colonel Johnson envisions for the future of space travel. We are an exploring people. If you look back in the history of our country, from the great explorers many centuries ago, they were exploring to find new lands, new ideas, new places. And time enables us to look back at these great expeditions in our history where we learned about the unknown unknowns. And that's what space offers for us. If you think of any of the great frontiers in our world, it's going deeper into the ocean, right? It's going up into the atmosphere, away from the atmosphere, out of the atmosphere, out among the planets in the solar system, out of the solar system. There's places that we just haven't gone. We've been to the moon, we, we've been to low Earth orbit with humans, and we've got probes uh, going all over the solar system right now, learning about Jupiter, learning about Pluto, and we're learning new things with every single mission. We've always sent many probes to the distant places before we actually send people. You know, it's partly because the unknown unknowns, we don't know what's out there, and we don't want to risk people's lives until we better understand the problem, we have some expectation of success. We have ideas. We have passions. We do have limitations with budget. So that's what we're doing right now. We're taking the first steps to figure out what we need to do, what kind of vehicle we have to have, what's the mission gonna be, and then how are we gonna get there. The Mars rovers have taught us so much about that planet that you just can't learn from just looking at it. And so we obviously haven't sent any humans, and as soon as we do send humans to Mars, we're gonna learn all kinds of new things. I personally believe that we're going to have a couple short missions to the moon and then we're actually going to set something up that on a more permanent basis, kind of like the space station. An outpost on the moon, I'm not sure how it will be funded. Maybe we could have some sort of commercial application so we could get private companies involved. We haven't been to the moon in 40 years and many of the smart people that designed those missions are retired. And so we've got a new brand of engineers and scientists and astronauts. And I think if we want to go to Mars, I think it makes sense to first go to the moon 
and relearn and improve on those missions that we did 40 years ago. Now eventually, we're hoping to go to Mars. I'm hoping that the kids in the audience, when they get to be my age, we will have looked back on several manned Mars missions. But for now, I think it's important for us to figure out how to get to a planet that's only you know, 250,000 miles away instead of millions and millions of miles away. Seems like there's a world of possibilities when it comes to future space travel. Now it's time to turn your imagination loose. Teachers, here's a great activity for you and your students to design a future mission to the moon. Look for Newton's Laws of Motion, Lunar Nautics. You'll find it on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We want to hear your ideas for future space travel. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.